Hello, hello everybody. Welcome on in. I hope you are here to see some quilts. I've got my special guest, my husband over here, who's going to help me show some quilts. We're going to jump right in because I have a lot to show you. So if you have questions, hold it to the end. I'll um, take your questions at the end, but we're going to get showing you some fall quilts here that I think are fall inspired. So this first one is I designed for Judy Niemeyer. This is called Geese in Flight. It's in her Geese Migrations book, which I don't have any more of, but she might have some more on her site. I do have links for everything, as you know, in the description above or below me. So this is called Geese in Flight, and I did use all K facet fabrics on this. It's paper pieced. So that's the first one. Share this video if you want uh, your friends to see uh, a cool trunk show. So go ahead and share this right now. So this one uh, reminds me a little bit of candy corn. So this is from my latest Island Batik collection, Sun Kissed Soleil. And this is my pattern Pineapple Express. I love, love, love this pattern because you use the Creative Grids ruler. It's not paper piece. But doesn't it remind you of candy corn? Um, a great fall quilt to make uh, for Halloween if you so choose. Pineapple Express. Then this next one is an oldie but a goodie. So this was my very first collection with Island Batik. This was a uh, fresh catch. And this quilt is my pattern called Scattered. And um, I designed it with a lot of this negative space and I had uh, Margaret uh, Gunn quilt it for me. Isn't that quilting just gorgeous? So this quilt is called Scattered. And again, you can find all these patterns on my website um, in the links above and below. So this is great because it's a 60 degree triangle. Super simple to make, really modern take on a simple quilt. And also fall inspired. So this one here, this is my pattern called Geometrics, and this one is simple. It's two blocks. Looks hard, but real simple. It's all about color placement. And this one um, is also done with my newest collection, Sun Kiss Soleil, which you can also find on my website. But again, this is two blocks. Really super simple. Um, I've done this in uh, several different colorways, but it still is one of my favorite quilts. And again, it's kind of got that candy corn effect going, but I think it, um, it, it's representative of fall. I know we're moving fast, but uh, my husband's got some great stuff that he's got going on it too. So he's, he's being a good sport and helping me out. So this one is a huge quilt. This is my dream weaver quilt and you know what and let's just hold it like this so they can kind of if you can kind of hold it up that way they can see the whole one uh, this is my dream weaver quilt this will fit on a well this is a queen size bed behind me so it fits on a, a queen size bed and um it's really nice because it gives you that southwestern kind of flair but you have these big blocks to do that so it doesn't take too long to put this together. And in my pattern, I give you two border choices. So this is one of the options for the borders. And then in the pattern, there's a second option, which is really kind of cool. So this has those fall colors going again. And this is my Sun Kiss Soleil collection. So you got a little bit of candy corn going on in this as well. Candy corn and pumpkin. Who loves pumpkin? Let's see. Let's fold this in half one more time. Just... Okay, this one is another one that is from my very first collection with Island Batik. Um, the collection was Fresh Catch. This was years ago. There is none, le none of this left, but I thought it was very fall-like. This, though, is my pattern Fractal. This is a great pattern for showing off those big prints that you, you have in your stash or otherwise. But isn't this great fall-inspired um, colors. You've got those uh, coppers and those oranges and those fall greens. Um, kind of looks like the leaves changing. So this is, the pattern is called Fractal. And the backing is also pretty, isn't it? Very fall. 
Okay, so I have, uh, this quilt is an old one, but a really good one. This one is um, Judy Niemeyer's Indian Summer Quilt. And again, so we've got some kind of muted tones here um, on this, but they are very reminiscent of fall. And the pattern, of course, Indian Summer reminds you of that. So you've got those copper tones, you've got some pale, almost fleshy kind of tones and browns and reds, uh, very much like the changing leaves. This one is paper pieced as well. Super simple quilt to put together. Now this one is the only one on the batch that I have not quilted yet. I don't know why, don't ask me, <laughs> but I have a lot of them. This one, uh, we'll just hold it up like we did the uh, Dreamweaver like this. This one is Judy Niemeyer's Prairie Star. I loved putting this quilt together. I thought it was super quick to put together. If you've never done a Lone Star type quilt, you've got to do a paper piece, you've got to do it in a, as a paper piece type quilt. They go together really simple. If you're afraid of um, Y seams, don't be afraid. Not difficult to make. Um, I thought this one was a really nice fall inspired quilt because it's kind of got all those colors of the leaves that fall on the ground, especially where we used to live in New England. So this one's got to get quilted. And by the way, if you don't have your quilt tops quilted, one of the things that you, you'll see that I do on my quilts is I do um, a stay stitch about an eighth of an inch around the edge of the... Um, quilt that way they, it doesn't fray if you don't think you're going to get it quilted right away. This quilt is also a Judy Niemeyer and it is done from my Sunkissed Soleil fabric collection from Island Boutique. This is a Judy Niemeyer. It's called Daggered Medallion. Isn't that just stunning? Can you imagine? So I had this on the bed underneath. This is a queen size bed. It fits, but can you imagine just having that medallion in the center of your bed? So, so pretty. Um, and again, it's got those pumpkin colors. It, it gives you that fall feel. And again, this is paper piece. This will take you a little bit longer. Uh, my friend Lisa Slinsky, who helps me out when I'm getting on a deadline, she actually pieced this one for me. But this is a beautiful, beautiful quilt to put together. All right, I've got a couple small ones coming up here. I'm going to toss that your way there. Okay, so this one here, I don't know how many of you have taken my Craftsy class. So this one is the Quiltworks Dresden Plate. And I thought this one uh, looked pretty fall-like, so I took it back out. Um, this is just the small wall hanging, and I show you in the class if you've taken that class online. If you haven't, you still can. It's on Craftsy. It's called the Quiltworks Dresden Plate. It is paper piece, and it's a jumping off point. If you have never done a Judy Niemeyer quilt, um, it's a great jumping off point for you to learn how to do that technique and it will get you to some of those harder ones that I've shown you. A lot of people have done that and they've been very successful in taking this class and then um, jumping to a more difficult one. These are also, well this one here, here I'll have all that then. These are a little table runner. This is also um, from that class and I show you how to make this little table runner. So it's just three and I thought that was kind of a fall looking quilt. It's got all those colors of the changing leaves. This one here is also a Judy Niemeyer quilt. This is um, the cactus, um, oh my god, cactus, cactus flower, I don't know why I had it, just a, my brain wasn't working. Cactus flower table runner. Super simple to put together. This one I had done in those golds and those coppers to again show you the fall. Isn't that pretty? And you can make it in any. I've had uh, people in classes make it Christmas, etc. This one I absolutely adore. So this one is my raspberry roll pattern. It is, um, let's put it back a little bit there. This one um, is all two and a half inch strips. Uh, you don't need a lot to do it. You just need your two and a half inch strips. But this was done out of my Sunkissed Soleil collection. So again, you have all those pumpkins, 
the colors of the tree leaves going um, and it goes together super quick so um, I believe in the pattern I think there's like 80 strips you need and that does the entire top and then all you need is your backing um, the very first quilt that I did with this I even used the strips to do the binding so it worked out really well but it's a super simple quilt if you want something quick and easy to do um, nice one to do this one was actually on the cover of a magazine way, way, way back in 2010, maybe something like that. Um, this was this one's called Autumn Sunset, and it was on I forget which magazine it was on. I think a quilt something or other, but a super simple quilt to make. Um, if I can find the magazine, because I save them all, the ones that I've designed that have gone in magazines. If I can find it, I'll post it later. The cover of the magazine but this one's called autumn sunset super simple to make a great picnic size blanket to sit on while you're under those falling leaves this quilt is another favorite of mine this one is called flying geese simple as simple as that um, it's a quilt that i designed for a magazine it was published, uh, I can't remember, probably somewhere around the same time as that other one. But I have this available as an individual pattern. Really easy to make and it's easy for you to make it larger or make it smaller. But this one's called Flying Geese and this is actually available as a, um, oops, as a singular pattern on my website, but these are great fall colors. Um, and of course, you can do any of these in any colors you want, but a super simple one to make. And I have, I know I went through these fast, wow. Um, and I'm gonna excuse my husband because I'm gonna talk a little bit and answer questions. We're all, you're all done, see? All right. Say goodbye. Bye everybody. <laughs> So I went through pretty quickly because um, my husband actually has a little meeting to go to. So I wanted to make sure that he got out of here on time and I did it record time. But you can go back and watch this video when I'm done. I've got three more things I wanted to show you that I thought were kind of fall-like and kind of fun. So this one here is a, a cushion, it's a big cushion. So you can use, use this like on the floor. You can put it on the bed, whatever you want. But this is done from my pansy garden pattern. And I took just one of the flowers, just one of them, and made a huge cushion. So you could just throw it on the floor and have fun with that. Um, really simple, super simple to make. So that's one thing I wanted to show you. Then this one here, okay, they're going to go down in size. So this is um, my Cactus and Blooms. Uh, it's a block from my Cactus and Blooms class that I teach online. Um, and it is a paper piece class. So you, if you haven't learned how to paper piece and you want to, this is a great one to do it on. And you could just make something as simple as a pillow if you don't want to make the whole quilt. But again, that's very fall-like with those orange pumpkin-y colors, etc. So that's a, another small one there. And then my friend Kyra made this little guy, which I, these actually all go together so nicely because all these colors are those fall colors. But she made this cute little guy. Um, this pattern, I believe, is Kate Collarin's from Seems Like a Dream. And she used, Kyra used my Sun Kiss Soleil collection to create this, which gives us a fall look. And they go beautifully together as pillows. And you can put, you know, anywhere. You can put them um, as throw pillows. This one, this pillow here with the cat, my Cactus in Bloom, that was made from my Ancient Etchings fabric collection. This one was made from my Mandala Magic fabric collection. And this one was made from my Sun Kiss Soleil collection. So see how beautifully they all go together. Um, they just do, they just work well. So that just as another thing to say, well, you don't always have to have a fabric collection per se, because if you are looking at color, you can really mix and match things to make it whatever you want. So if you want it to look like fall, 
you can definitely uh, mix and match up those collections because these all go together. And a lot of the quilts that you just saw do the same thing. They're all made from different fabrics. Um, mostly every single one that I showed you was batiks. There was the exception of the geese in flight at the beginning, which was K facet fabric. Um, but it melds in really well with all those others. So, um, I, it just kind of fun. And you know what? I got one more thing to show you. It's sitting over here in the corner of my spare bedroom. Hang on one second. I'm going to show you because I'm looking at it and I'm like, wow, that looks like fall too. So this was my electric desert fabric collection. So we made a tuffet out of it. And you can see the saguaro cactus applique on there. But my electric desert fabric collection had those fall colors too. It had those coppers and rusts that you, you see in fall, but you also see in the desert. So I think it's kind of fall-like as well. Whoop. I'm just kind of trying to walk around the quilts that are now on the floor. But anyway, um, let me just move these a little bit. I don't want to step on them. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to check to see if you all have any questions. Um, let me scroll back. If you have questions, jot them down in there and um, I will answer whatever questions you have. Let's see who's here. Dan Perkins. Hello, Dan. Uh, Linda's here. Hi. And Lisa. Hello, Lisa. Um, Dan says, I like several of the designs, but you use pieces so much... <laughs> Too large for me. <laughs> yes, Dan, I know you like to you like to do smaller pieces. Um, the Dream Weaver was one of those where it was much larger, but it's quicker to get done. Absolutely. The paper piece ones, not so big. Um, let's see, Linda. Hi, Linda. Hi, Angelina. Um, Patty, hello. Let's see what other let's see. Oh. And Dana saying hello to Rod. Well, Dana, he left. I'll have to tell him <laughs> that you said hello. Thank you, Linda. I, I um, also like my mandala magic fabric um, in the ancient etchings. Let's see. And there's Caroline is here. Are you having classes soon? So, Marion, I am having classes soon. So, um, if you want to see where I'm teaching... I actually have it on my website as a schedule. I have, um, I'm doing a retreat with Stitch in Heaven in Boca Raton, Florida for a week in January. Then I have a cruise coming up in um, June as well. And then one in the fall, no, the winter. Um, so you can find those on my schedule. And then just little things here and there. Plus, I always remember I have online classes. I have two online classes on Craftsy. And I have two line online classes on my own uh, platform. So you can access all those online classes straight from my website, cvquiltworks.com. Um, and then just go up to the tab that says classes, online classes, and you'll see them all there. There's four there. And I am working on another one right now. Uh, hopefully... I will have that up soon as well. I do have another pattern launch that I think that you will all really enjoy coming up super soon. Um, worked really, really hard on this pattern and it's really pretty. Um, really, really pretty. So it's a little bit more intricate and Dan, if you're still here, um, it's probably one you really like. Um, but uh, so I do have classes and new stuff coming out. And of course, always my Watch Me Wednesday tutorials. Um, thank you, Linda. I'm excited for the new pattern too. Um, it's, it's really nice. You're going to get to see me um, working on it coming up soon. Yes, Lisa knows that it's pretty because Lisa is one of my testers. So she she did a fantastic job we've been working on that one really really hard uh getting it edited getting it into format so that i can um, pass it on to you um, it pattern writing is definitely a, an art to it and it's very time consuming process and we try 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 so hard to get them out there to you without any errors in them 
So I had lots of eyes on them where when I do a pattern, any pattern, and all the ones that you've seen that, I've, um, that are available to you, um, we have done multiple times uh, over and we've figured the math, we've had people looking at it, um, editing it. So there's a team of us that, that work on it and try to get these out to you with little or zero errors. Um, but sometimes the errors pop up and that's, that happens, but we don't like it. We get it corrected and we make sure you get the corrections. So yeah, um, new pattern will be coming soon. Uh, anyway, if there's no other questions, I am hoping, let's see, next week, let's take a look. I've got, I want to look at my calendar because since my husband's been retired, man, we have been going, going, going. Okay, so the next, the next Watch Me Wednesday will be two weeks from now, November 3rd. I will have some new tutorial for you um, that I thought a fall trunk show would be kind of cool. I probably won't have a Christmas trunk show because guess what? I don't have any Christmas quilts. Do you believe it? How many of you have Christmas quilts? I have, I think zero. Actually, I shouldn't say zero. I do have um, some Christmas tree skirts, but they're made in brighter, non-Christmassy kind of fabrics. So, um, I, I don't know why I don't have any Christmas tree skirts or any Christmas quilts. I don't know why. Um, probably cause all my, the fabric that I design is so bright and cheerful. I guess I could make a Christmas quilt out of some of them with some red and green, right? Um, I don't know. Anyway, um, you know, oh, awesome. There's somebody else. Carmen doesn't have any either. Thank you, Carmen. <laughs> Thank you for joining me in the no Christmas quilts. Uh, someday I will have at least one or two. Um, so Deb says she's got five. Pa Pamela is saying, uh, do something for Christmas. Maybe I'll do some kind of um, Christmas tutorial. Um, let's see, what, does, what is Debbie saying? She's saying, oops, that's Caroline. Bright and cheerful for Christmas always works. Thank you, Caroline. I hope so because that's all I got. Um, Debbie says, do more, I do more winter type quilts. They last longer. That's true. They do. And, and a couple of the tree skirts that I have are actually from some of my, uh, fabric lines. And I have a couple done in those like icy blue colors. So they're winter themed versus Christmas themed. But anyway, anyway, well, I hope you enjoyed my trunk show. If you did enjoy it, do me a favor, share the video, share this video for me. I would appreciate it. It keeps me going. If you're on YouTube, if you, or if you go to YouTube after this to rewatch it, give me a thumbs up, give me a like on YouTube because that get, that actually gets my video out to more people. So if you give it a thumbs up on YouTube, I would really appreciate it. If you leave a comment on YouTube, that's awesome. I do try and get back and answer all those comments on all the platforms. So you can always watch this video again on my YouTube channel. If you're not subscribed to that, subscribe and then click on the bell notifications so that you always get notified when I have a new video coming out. I will also be posting it on my IGTV. And of course, you can always watch it right here on my Canton Village Quilt Works Facebook page anytime because all my videos live here as well. So you have several ways to access it. And I am thankful for all of you who continue to join me every time I do a Watch Me Wednesday or a tutorial. I so appreciate that. You don't, you don't know how much I appreciate you being here. Thank you for joining me today. Happy quilting. And I will see you all on November 3rd. Have a great week, everybody. Bye-bye.